everybody, welcome to this quick session. I wanted to talk quickly about target delivery domain. Uh, I see I've had quite a few comments on the videos and it's come up a lot in other conversations about what actually is the target delivery domain, what it means and, and why we need to pay a bit of attention to it. So I want to go through what it, how it relates to a Microsoft tenant to tenant migration and then also more importantly to the Google side, which is where it really comes into play nicely. So for a Microsoft 365 tenant to tenant migration using those native tools, it's going to ask you as you create the batch and we'll say, what is the target delivery domain? Now, ordinarily, all we just put in there is the tenant name dot on Microsoft.com that relates to the target tenant. And that's what it really means is it's saying target delivery domain. Where should it tell if it needs to tell the source? anywhere if we're doing any writing on the source at all. And this is relevant for the Google side as well as the Microsoft side, but specifically for Microsoft at this point in the video, it will ask and say, if I need to do anything with the source and tell it what uh, email domain to have mail forwarded to, which is like it says, target delivery domain, what is that going to be? So in most cases, in fact, I, I don't think of a case I've used it in, in 365 where I haven't set it to just the, the target um, or tenant name, which is going to be, let's say, XYZ dot on Microsoft.com, and then it's done. Now, this is important because when we start doing Google migrations and other things into Microsoft tenants, that's where we get to see the real power behind it and why they've included it. Why would they just include a setting that we're just going to put the, the tenant name uh, of the target in anyway? So where did that really come into play? So like I said, the Microsoft side, pretty easy. You just put that in and that becomes the target uh, on Microsoft.com domain for the tenant. But when we switch over to Google, I'll tell you what that really does. Now, it really comes into play when you complete a batch. So if I've got a batch, of, and, and this is why sometimes it gets a bit tied up in the testing function. You think everything's working because you're paying a lot of attention to the, the source accounts. You're probably watching the mail on the source and the, and the target and seeing mail flood in. It's when you go to do the uh, the uh, the batches and you might have a hundred people in there that's when you start to see target delivery domain errors and of course we wonder why that is so what happens is is at the end of the migration when you do the completion when you put a target delivery domain in what it does is it, it fires back to google and says to google okay i want you to put a forwarder in that account automatically so any mail that hits that old account is going to come over to microsoft 365 automatically I think great not a problem so what it will do though is when, when it first does that, it actually looks and see whether or not that target delivery domain is a registered domain on the Google side. Now, if it's not in the Google tenant and it hasn't been registered in there at all, what will happen is it will then ask the user and said, do you give permission for your email to be forwarded to this account? If the domain is already in there, let's say we call it 0365.planium.com, which is one of my test example domains we use, and we plug that into Google, it won't need to ask the user. And that's why it works on a test because you're monitoring the mail and you see an email pop in that says, hey, would you like to automatically forward mail? And then you just click on yes, and it goes through. You get about um, two or three minutes to do that before the batch will actually fail. So that's important to know. As I say, that's why the testing often works really well because you're monitoring it, you click on it, everything works, the batch completes, and you think, well, woohoo, excellent, that's, that's really working well. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a domain, which we'll call in this case 0365.planium.com. Now what we do with that domain is we add that domain as a valid domain inside the Google Workspace. So we'll add 0365.google, sorry, dot planium, sorry, get that right, 0365.planium.com into the Google tenant. And then we will apply that to also the Microsoft tenant as well. We'll make it, uh, we'll put that on the 365 site. So we've got 0365.planium.com registered there as well. We'll do our public DNS entries. So it then points to 365. So we have to do all of that as well. So that's, there's our steps. One, add it to the Google tenant. So 0365.planium.com, add it in the Google tenant as a valid alias. Secondly, add it in the Microsoft 365 tenant, make it go in there as an acceptable alias as well. Add the public DNS records so that if you do send an email to 0365.planium.com, it will get to that account. Lastly, 
add an alias. Now this is including if you want to do the forwarding. If you don't want any forwarding to actually occur, which if you're just cutting over the whole domain in one big bang approach, maybe you don't need to, um, but it's important that you have the aliases set. So if we had you know, bob.jones at like my, one of my planium.com um, accounts there, we would have bob.jones at 0365.planium.com and stamp that as an alias on his account as well. So it's all gonna be tied in nicely like that. What you'll find then, what will happen, is that when you complete the batch for, in this case, Bob Jones, it will then look at Google and say, Google, I need you to automatically forward all Bob Jones' email that hits his account into M365. Here's my target delivery domain. So match up the two aliases and apply it. Google will then say, oh, I have an allowed domain of the 0365 planium.com I'm just going to stamp his account without asking and then you'll find the batch will then continue and it will all complete very very nicely now what I'm going to show you here is just a web page that you can go to I'm going to put it in the description as well so you can refer to it but it is the Microsoft instructions on how to do exactly what I've just said and where to put it in the Google side where to put it on the m365 side and then apply it so just lastly what you then set is the target delivery domain on your migration batches would be 0365.planium.com and apply that in there. Um, you'll find that uh, everything will work great. You'll have everything synced up and everything will work wonderful until you go and complete that batch if that domain is not registered on the Google side. Uh, and then of course you've got a bit of trouble because you can't change the target delivery domain in a batch once it's run. Uh, if that is the case, just a, a tip on that, what you would do is just kill off the batch, just delete it. It's not going anywhere, just delete it. Recreate the batch with the same people in there, the same aliases, and do it. When you rerun the batch with the correct target delivery domain in there, what will happen is it will then pick up the, the fact that it's already got that email uh, data across and it won't do the entire migration again. So if a user had 10 gig of data, it's not gonna recopy the 10 gig of data. It's gonna do its little delta sync and work out that that was already provisioned on the M365 side. So don't worry about deleting and then recreating batches uh, if you need to. Um, you know, it, it takes a bit longer for them to, to sync up and work, but they do work. So there's, there's no real trouble there if you've got into a bit of trouble with target delivery domain. But what I would suggest is, is do that, set one batch up, put half a dozen users in, there's your pilot, stamp the addresses across either of them, uh, so either of the two sides of the bridge, so your, your source being Google and the, the target being M365. Get that all set up, test it with the users, and make sure there's no interaction on the user's side. And this is where what I was saying before with the testing, that's where the downfall comes in, because people look at the email and click, oh yes, I want to forward mail, and the batch completes. That's not going to help you in a production state when you're doing hundreds and hundreds of mail. So you need to make sure you just do the complete, leave it alone, and see it all come through nicely. So as I say, I'll put that um, the address in the uh, description so you can check that out. I'll even put it on the screen here so you can see it as well. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is target delivery domain in a very small little nutshell. I really do hope that helps out some people that are struggling with that, the Google side and the error messages that come up. And I will catch you next time. Hey, guess what? Subscribe for me. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. See ya.